I might not be any good. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, I, I was curious um, uh, about something. How many people here, raise your hand if you have uh, seen or, or, or read or heard me before, just so I know. Okay, so I'm going to bore some of you with stories you may have heard before, but that's fine. I, and thank you, those of you who are coming back and those of you here for the first time, but I'd kind of like to know how much, how weird it's going to be to listen to the American guy, basically. Um, uh, I, I got this so that I'd know what we're talking about here today. <coughs> we are talking about in traditional, apparently, according to this, in traditional models of stress, the harder life gets, the more stress we experience. Right? That sounds logical, doesn't it? This means yes, by the way. <laughs> just, 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 that's universal, right? That's not like it. Um, so that's the way we normally think about it, that the, you, you know, the harder life is, the more stress we'll experience, the easier life we have, the less stress we'll experience. It's one of the reasons we want an easy life, so that we can have less stress. Now, by the end of tonight, I hope you're going to see just how untrue that is. But it's a starting point that most of us have. At some level, we kind of think the only reason that that's not true is because we're, we, we don't have an easy enough life yet. Like, like if I, it's just, I'm, I'm just not quite successful enough. I'm on the right path. It's just, you know, I need to get a little further. I, you know, I'm just not zen enough yet. You know, it's like, it's like if I could just like get a little more mellow then everything would be cool and I would never feel stress. It's the way that we think. It's the direction that we move ourselves in. And the problem with it, the only problem with it, is it doesn't work. Other than that, great strategy. <laughs> uh, now, so, if we want to live happier, healthier lives, we have only three choices. Stress avoidance. Okay, so I'm just not going to do the kinds of things that are stressful. And I'm going to make my life choices according to what won't stress me out. So, I could go off to university, but that sounds very stressful, so I'm going to stay at home. I, I could go off and try and get the job I really want, but this job in this career, much more sensible. My mother loves me when I take this job. It's going to be good. It, 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 it feels safe. So stress avoidance. I, I, I do have goals and dreams, but I'm going to squash them down very, very, very small, and I'm going to put them over there. I can always come back and get them later. Never too late and I'm going to live my life over here where it's safe. Right? We've all done some version of that at some point. Stress avoidance. Makes sense isn't actually a practical strategy as we'll see as we unfold. The second way, so if you're not going to avoid stress, well then you're going to manage your stress. Hey, stress is unavoidable, man, life's hard. But you're tough. Right? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to learn to manage our stress. And, and, and do you know what? It's a spiritual crowd. We're going to learn to manage it. Through breath, a little bit of uh, <laughs> meditation. I'm gonna manage my stress. What are you doing? I'm managing my stress. What are you doing? <laughs> managing my stress. You know, we all have our own ways of doing it, right? We all find our, our way of managing stress. Again, seems like one of the decent options. Hopefully, as this evening goes on, you're gonna see that it's, it's, it's not so much that it doesn't work as that it's actually not that necessary. So that's, that's one of the, the tried and true. And then the, the third one, right, is stress hardiness. That's the really tough one, right? Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were tougher. <laughs> Cowboy up, kids. It's a hard world out there. But you know what? You can take it, right? That's what all those talks are about. They're about stress hardiness, right? And, and, and you get... If you're a man, you get broad shoulders, and if you're a woman, you get broad shoulders and a strapless gown. I don't know, but it's the same idea, right? That the goal would be to be able to take it better. It's an interesting goal, but it does make a certain kind of sense if you believe that stress is something that is inevitable and that stress is something that happens to us out there in the field. Now, by the way, I'm not suggesting for a moment that life doesn't happen to us, okay? Uh, one, of, one of my inspirations is a guy named Sid Banks, Scottish teacher, and he used to say, life is a contact sport. And that's been true in my experience. I, I have not met anybody that I've talked to for any length of time who hasn't had some kind of trauma in their life to overcome, usually multiple kinds of trauma in their life to overcome. I haven't met anyone above the age of about three 
who hasn't had some pretty bad experiences that they wish they hadn't had. I haven't met anyone over the age of 18, well, 18, I'll say 21, who hasn't had at least one relationship that they wish they had had or hadn't had. Right? Life happens. This isn't about, hey, if you just listen, life won't happen to you. You'll be safe. You'll, nothing, I don't know a way to do that, and I don't know that actually you'd really want that. You're on the planet. You may as well live here. Right? A lot of us spend a certain amount of time trying not to be here because that feels like maybe that would be safe. That's a kind of stress avoidance. I'm, uh, I'm too spiritual for this world. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being spiritual, but understand, if that's your defense mechanism, right? When I first moved to LA, I had an acting teacher, and he, he was an on-camera acting teacher, and, and he, he told me once, he said, I've got a foolproof way of knowing if somebody thinks they're on a spiritual path. And I thought, oh, that's kind of cool, and I watched him, and he would, he would you know, kind of signal to me, because I was helping with the cameras back then when I was first out there. And, uh, and then he'd ask, you know, do you consider yourself a spiritual person? Always the ones who did said yes and the ones he hadn't signaled me. No, not really. Well, I asked him how he did it. And he said, the ones who think they're on a spiritual path are dead from the neck down. <laughs> now again, that doesn't mean that if you're on a spiritual path, you're dead from the neck down. It means it's one of the ways that people try to avoid the pain of life. And hopefully, as we go today, you're going to see again, not that it doesn't sort of work, but that it isn't actually necessary. Because it turns out stress doesn't work the way we thought it did. And so the strategies we've developed to deal with it are of limited effectiveness, as they would be, right? If I thought that um, the reason that my head hurt was because I had pasta for dinner, right? I would think, oh, I've got to cut out pasta, man. I must have some weird food allergies. I mean, I just have this throbbing pain in my head. It's really difficult, right? And I would try different foods because maybe it was the salad, maybe it was the, maybe it was the soft drink, right? It, you know, and I'd try all the limiting certain foods. Maybe it's a gluten-free diet I need. Maybe I need to go macrobiotic. And I would come up with all these plausible things to try but the second that I see the real source of this, well, I know what to do. I stop doing it. And what you're going to see tonight, I hope, at least a glimpse of, is the real source of stress in our lives. And once you see it, there's, not, there's nothing to do. You don't have to go out and practice. You don't have to go out and, oh, man, wow, you're not going to believe this. I've been hitting myself in the head all night. It's crazy. I need to take a course on how to stop hitting myself in the head. That is a joke. <laughs> just, just check it. Right? No, you don't need to take a course on that because, of course, once you see it, you just stop doing it. We have a high, high, high degree of common sense. It doesn't always get put into practice, but it's built into the system. Okay? So I'm going to suggest that maybe there's a, a, a different way of listening tonight than you might sometimes listen. Uh, to a talk. And that's, that's not to try and listen to, 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 to figure it out. Right, what's he saying? What, now, what's he saying? Okay, so we're going to learn the end of stress. Okay, do I need my notebook? I'm, uh, right, okay, the secret of stress. Not, not to listen that way because it, it's not that kind of talk. Okay, there's not going to be any step one, step two, step three. There's not going to be a try this simple 500 step technique. Okay. I'm not going to show, share the top 35 strategies for beating stress in your life and becoming more. Not because, but just, ooh, I was about to say not because uh, it doesn't work, but actually yes, because it doesn't work. Because the problem with those is they work great sometimes for the person who made them up. Right? They, that's why they came up with them. Well, that worked for me. Uh, you know, what, um, what uh, size shoes do you wear? Seven and a half? Yeah. Seven and a half shoes. Okay, well, um, I think they're pretty nice. I, uh, I think I'm going to have those shoes. So, uh, should we trade? No. no? <laughs> well, why not? Uh, so I, did you know, are you saying these aren't nice shoes? Uh, yes. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm going to play with this side of the audience now. <laughs> Look, it would be silly. The fact that her shoes might be real. Your shoes are comfortable, right? Yes. Yeah, the fact that her shoes are comfortable, the fact that they look nice, doesn't mean that that has anything to do with what's going to work for me. That's the problem with sharing strategies for success. They may well work for a certain kind of person. 
and it is usually the kind of person who writes strategies for success. Right? Time management strategies is probably the place where it's most obvious. The people who write books on time management are the people who don't need books on time management. Those of us who read books on time management could never follow a system like that in the first place. <laughs> right? it's, it's, it's an innocent thing, but it's just not how things work. What every major change I have seen, every transformation, I talk about transformative coaching. That's the nature of my work. I'm not interested particularly in just helping somebody get from here to there. Okay? There are people who do that. It's a, it's a worthy thing. It's, it's not enough for me. I'm interested in how somebody's quality of life can transform on their way from here to there. Not instead of, not, well, I'm not going anywhere, but I'm happy. But actually, I have a wonderful experience of going for and getting and having what I want. So even on the way, even if I don't get there, I mean, as I always say about this kind of work, look, worst case, <coughs> you have a wonderful life. Best case, you have a wonderful life and drive a Porsche. It just kind of is a more plausible way of going about things. Because most people don't just want peace of mind. They want peace of mind and a nice piece of real estate. And it's actually easier to get the real estate and the Porsche when you start with the peace of mind. We're going to talk a bit about that as we go. So, again, Slightly different way of listening. Every transformation I have experienced. Here's another way of talking about transformation. Okay, I, I remember a client phoned from Belgium once, potential client at that point, and said, uh, well, I have these plans, and I want to, I'm here, and I want to get there, and I want to do this, and I want to do that. And I listened, and it, it didn't have that ring of, yeah, oh, I really get that. I can really feel that sense, because you can, right? When somebody's talking about their true passion, you can feel it. That's one of the ways you know. It's like you, you almost get excited. Wow, I want to do that. And you don't really, but you get caught up in their passion. You've had that experience? Right, well, this wasn't that. <laughs> this was a very logical, sensible 35-step plan that was going to get from it. And, and, um, and I said, look, there's two different ways we could work. Imagine that you were inside an egg, okay? We could work in such a way that at the end of our time together, you have a much more beautifully decorated inside of an egg. Or you could hatch. If you want a better interior decorated egg, you need to go somewhere else. If you'd like to hatch, we can do that. So if we're going to transform, if we're going to actually change not just a little bit, but something fundamental that will change everything in our lives. To have that experience where in a way nothing's changed because look, you're going to leave here an hour and a half older. <laughs> but in another way, everything's different. Then you also have to listen a little bit differently. But it's actually easier. So instead of trying to make sense, and where's he going with this, and I don't get this, and I'm, is he going to get on, he seems to be doing a hell of a preamble, and blah, blah, blah. Right? Listen the way you would listen to a piece of music. Just let it wash over you. I'll be mildly entertaining throughout the evening. It'll be fine. But what it opens up is the possibility of your seeing something you have not seen before. And that is the common element in every transformation I have ever witnessed or heard about in my life. New thought. New sight insight. Suddenly you see something you've never seen before, even if you've been looking at it for ages. Suddenly you hear something that maybe you've even heard, maybe somebody's been saying to you for ages, and suddenly you hear it and you just know, oh my God, that's true. And those new thoughts can only get in when you're a little bit quieter on the inside. It's like I, I, I sometimes, on, uh, I actually did this physically once, and it was a big mistake, so now I just do it as a visual metaphor. But but I said to, to, to a group, okay, if there was a fan here, so imagine, you know, there's a fan spinning, and here's a pack of playing cards, and your job is to get as many of the playing cards through the fan as possible. And, you know, we looked at the different strategies. So some people like just were like, 
And they might get one through, but mostly they just, it was just disastrous. And then there were the, 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 the people who, um, why thank you. <laughs> <laughs> then, there were, then there were the, the people who like got, got clever and like they take the whole pack and try and just shove it through in one go and it's like, well, I lost a couple fingers, but I think I'm going to win. I got 32 cards are still in there. This is why I don't do it with a real fan anymore. And, um, and of course, at some point, somebody figures out that the most effective strategy is to turn off the fan. So that's going to be kind of what I'm asking you to do a little bit. Just turn off the fan as best you can. Right? I say as best you can because if a fan's been spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning and if we're talking about stress, the fan's going to be spinning. Even when you unplug it, it keeps spinning for a while. So as best you can, sit back, relax, and let's chat. Okay? And, and what we're going to chat about is society's view of stress, like what we have been taught stress is, where it comes from, how to deal with it. And we're going to talk about where our experience comes from. And we're going to talk about how the mind works. And if you see anything about any of that, if you have a new thought, an insight, some fresh thinking around how the mind works, if you have an insight, a new thought, some fresh thinking, around where, where stress comes from, where does it really work. If you have some fresh insight, some new thought about what's possible for you, if you were able to live in the world with less stress, but without having to have the world change first, your life will begin to change. Maybe not dramatically, maybe dramatically. I don't know. I've seen all sorts of things happen way out of proportion to what I say. See, that's like my secret weapon. I get amazing results, but it's because human beings have amazing potential. I'm good, but I'm not that good. You have within you innate wisdom. You have within you innate well-being. Because of that, all I kind of have to do is, is make a few cracks in the concrete that's been poured over your life. And that will start to bubble up again. You'll start to get back into that flow. Metaphor I sometimes use about different things, but it's just as true about this, is if, if a stick is in the flow of a river and it gets stuck, it doesn't need therapy. It needs a nudge back into the flow. This is my experience of human beings. Even if we have been stuck for a really, really, really long time and we feel really, 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 really stuck, often just a little nudge back into the flow of our own wisdom, back into the flow of our own well-being is all it takes. And suddenly, for no reason, the world's not such a scary place and we start getting new ideas about what's possible. So that, is that a worthwhile thing for us to talk about tonight?